2020 was a cruel mistress to everyone. And if you would have asked me in December 2019 that I would end up being a massive fan of one of the most simplistic games ever made, I'd laugh in your face. Tetris is so absolutely universal that it just kind of exists in the cultural zeitgeist of humanity. Every time someone does something related to organizing shapes, they probably think of Tetris. It is so simple, so beautifully accessible and addicting that it was initially used in the Moscow Institute. It was created to test the psychological effects of addiction. The skill ceiling of Tetris is the absolute limit from grandmas to competitive players and it's basically endless. So how am I emotionally attached to this game? Well, without going into too much detail, 2020 was pretty insane for me and to say that I have anxiety is kind of an understatement. I am however doing much better and, and making significant progress in terms of managing myself and my emotions. Something I've happened to significantly struggle with is ADHD, and specifically I've struggled with trichotillomania, an anxiety condition that basically just means hair pulling when you're anxious or bored. I have often tried to find ways to circumvent this with fidget toys. However, for whatever reason, nothing quite worked as well as Tetris. To explain why I think Tetris works so well as a supremely satisfying ADHD solution, I'd like to tap into its design as a video game. In his retrospective on the God of War series, YouTuber Noah Caldwell Gervais discusses the old school critique of video games as simply being mindless, with players often sitting in front of their screens with glazed over eyes, tuned out to the rest of the world. Noah brings up, however, that the reason this phenomenon occurs in the first place is because of the genius work on the part of some game designers. There's so many complex reasons why a game can be so engrossing, but for the most part, this comes down to mechanical complexity and keeping the player engaged. If what is going on on screen and with the controller is engaging enough, your brain is forced to keep up, putting all of its resources into keeping you in the game. This flow state isn't dissimilar to workers getting caught up in a busy day of hustle and bustle or, or going to the gym and getting into a rhythm. It means that your brain is fully satisfied and focused. Tetris achieves this in some very particular ways. The first way is the construction of tetrominoes and how satisfyingly perfect they are. They feel solid and the harsh lines and clear outlines add a sense of weight. The game just feels good to play. Any mistakes are your own. Secondly, the pacing. The increase of levels and speed that the pieces drop means that while a round may start off calm enough, it quickly escalates into a game of management and precision. At higher skill levels, building troughs and openings to lower the limit allows for control of the board. However, if you panic and the speed catches up to you, the likelihood of failure increases. The next thing that motivates this is the scoring system. Beat the basics of the original game to the multi-Tetris clears of Tetris effect, the score gives players just enough incentive if they get far enough in the run to keep going, or more likely, try again when they fail. Pair this with just how many versions of Tetris there are, and you have a ubiquitous masterpiece in the same league as Pac-Man, Puyo Puyo, Mario, and weirdly enough, God of War. Tetris is engrossing, and if you haven't played it in a while, I highly recommend just picking it up for a round or two. See what happens with your mind. If your thoughts are racing or you just feel fidgety, give it a shot. And uh, yeah, tell me how it goes. Thanks for watching.